The accident that occurred in 1986 at the Chernobyl nuclear power station in the Soviet Union is known as the worst disaster in nuclear power generation. The disaster occurred when technicians at Nuclear Reactor Unit 4 attempted a poorly designed experiment. The technicians shut down the reactor's power regulating and its emergency safety systems. Additionally, they removed control rods from the reactor core while simultaneously allowing the reactor to perform at 7% power. These mistakes were later confirmed to be what led to an uncontrolled chain reaction which resulted in multiple massive explosions. This event caused severe radiation sickness and contamination. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a closer look at three Chernobyl discoveries and understand a little more as to what is going on. There's a new species taking over at Chernobyl. Have you ever wondered what happens when people abandon 1,600 square miles as a result of radioactivity? Normally you would not think that, but apparently wildlife runs wild. A recent study that focuses on animals in the Chernobyl exclusion zone has shown that the once wasteland is presently filled with roe and red deer, wild boar, wolves and elk. Researchers performed aerial surveys in the exclusion zone during the winter months between 1987, a year after the disaster occurred, and 1997. They relied on tracks in the snow in order to determine animal populations. What they found was the number of animals in the area was similar to the numbers in four uncontaminated nature reserves close by. However, the number of the wolves alone was more than seven times higher than that of the wolves in the reserves. The numbers of the other species inhabiting the Chernobyl exclusion zone seemed to increase at times as well, while the elk and wild boar populations were decreasing elsewhere in the former Soviet Union. However, some researchers argue that even though the wildlife numbers are very likely much higher at Chernobyl in comparison to before the accident, that does not mean that radiation is good for wildlife. It just suggests that the effects of things like hunting, farming and forestry which are byproducts of human habitation, are a lot worse. On the other hand, there are researchers who have studied birds in the exclusion zone who say that this research only applies to large mammals who would normally be living under the pressures of hunting, as opposed to the vast majority of animals that are not directly influenced by human habitation, like most birds, small mammals and insects. Furthermore, some researchers argue that because the research did not focus on radiation exposure, it did not address the question of whether radiation has effects on things like reproduction, survival, longevity and general health of the animals that were surveyed. Former Chernobyl engineer reveals he witnessed a major nuclear leak at the plant four years before the 1986 disaster. An engineer who was previously employed at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant has recently revealed that he bore witness to a major accident four years prior to the disaster that occurred in 1986. Nikolai Steinberg was one of the Ukrainian engineers who built the plant near the Soviet city of Pripyat, as well as served as the head of turbines in the summer of 1982, when, according to him, a serious incident took place. Nikolai appeared on the UK's Channel 5 documentary series called the Chernobyl disaster, in which he said he witnessed steam coming out of a pipe outside of his office during what was meant to be a routine exercise that was a part of a major nuclear leak at Reactor 1 of the plants. However, he alleged that officials at Chernobyl never addressed the situation. In fact, Nikolai alleged officials tried to bury the incident. The former Chernobyl engineer further explained how he became a witness to this incident. He says he was in his office at the time of the routine exercise, but there was an announcement regarding an accident at the second unit, at which point he left his office, and that is when he saw steam coming out of the ventilation pipe just outside his office. The steam was actually a sign of a major nuclear leak. Reactor 1 was then shut down, and Nikolai told his team to wait, having thought the officials would brief the workers on the incident that had just taken place. He continued to explain that he told his team they were not going home but instead were having an emergency meeting. However, that meeting never occurred and by 1am the employees went home. According to Nikolai, 
The KGB, the USSR's secret police, which was constantly present, quickly covered up the accident. He says that is how things worked, and even though he knew, there was no information about why it happened. The engineer divulges that the employees were never officially informed and there were no reports made. Historian Dr. Natalia Chernyshova said the KGB would have had two priorities after the 1982 incident, which would have been to investigate whether that was an act of sabotage or whether somebody was being negligent, as well as contain any rumors that might have been going around in order to prevent possible panic. Natalia notes that when she looked into records on Chernobyl dating back to 1983, which were only declassified in 2017, she discovered the presence of distorted rumors spread by a resident of Pripyat. She adds that none of this information was made available to the press as this was the kind of situation that the Soviet Union dreaded. The same report reveals that in the space of January 1978 to December 1982, the station experienced 27 accidents and 87 equipment failures. Five of these accidents and 16 failures were in the 12 months of 1982. Following the reactor malfunction seen by Nikolai, radiation spread over a nine-mile radius around the station. Unfortunately, the residents of Pripyat were never notified. Chernobyl will be uninhabitable for at least 3,000 years. More than three decades after the world's worst nuclear disaster, the city of Pripyat in Ukraine is still thousands of years away from possible resettlement. It was reported by Greenpeace in their 2016 study of the accident that the Chernobyl disaster caused irreversible damage to the environment that is expected to last for thousands of years. Even though it has been more than three decades since the accident, the immediate area surrounding Chernobyl will have to remain empty for at least 3,000 years as a result of dangerously high contamination levels. Some oppose this and claim that it is safe, but the history of nuclear energy speaks for itself, with numerous disasters and near-disasters. The 1986 disaster at Chernobyl is one of the most frightening examples of the potential catastrophic consequences of a nuclear accident. An estimated 220,000 people were moved from their homes, and the radioactive fallout resulted in 4,440 square kilometers of agricultural land as well as 6,820 square kilometers of forests in Belarus and Ukraine being unusable. Sergei Parashin, an engineer at the plant who worked there from 1977 to the day of the accident, told newspapers that they were extremely arrogant and thought that there was nothing they could not do. He admits that was the day they realized they were wrong. Nuclear experts who are currently working in the efforts to clean up the site say that the estimated return date of 3,000 years is optimistic. Still, Ihor Gromotkin, who was the director of the Chernobyl power plant, says that it will be at least 20,000 years before the reactor site would become inhabitable again. Regardless of the 3,000 or 20,000 year warning, there are some locals who have decided to repopulate the area their relatives once called home. Alexandra Losbin, who is one of the estimated 160 people to return to the zone, says her husband had wanted to come back to his homeland all his life. He went back when it was all closed and prohibited, but he crossed through the barbed wire anyway. She says she and her husband returned to their home, which is situated seven kilometers away from Chernobyl, in 2010. Furthermore, she says they hope that people will go back there and live, and their children and grandchildren will see what life was like there. But what do you make of these Chernobyl discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.